such a bold statement to put the, the dark tower on the, the front cover as well. You know, that was a lot of initial excitement that that, um, you know, that that, uh, that that spawned, you know, initially and, and for a good reason as well. Was that, was that always the case that you wanted to tie those in? I know, we, I know you mentioned to me, Rich, that even when you were, when you took over um, the button box from, uh, from Stephen Kane that said, here you go, incomplete, run with it, see what you can do. You ran with it. And I know you were kind of very nervous as well about doing that tying and kind of taking things back to, uh, you know, to, uh, to the town of Barrie. You weren't sure what uh, the reception was going to be. And, you know, you'd mentioned to me in a previous chat that Stephen King was very excited about that. Uh, as far as that tie-in with, with Wendy's final task, and obviously we can't say too much more about that because we don't want to spoil anything. Was right. that always the plan or is that another situation where you're like, let's see what I can do with this one and just kind of buckle up and, and you went for it? Yeah, no, you know what? That's the interesting thing is Stephen and I never really had a plan with this. <laughs> it, it really was just the case of two writers, you know, joining together to, to have some fun yeah. and, and see where Wendy took us. Um, you know, I, I know I've seen a lot of reader comments that say, you know, oh, of course, right from the very first book, Button Box, we knew this would connect to the Dark Tower. And, yeah. uh, well, I, you know, <laughs> sometimes the readers know more than the creators. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Steve and I never really discussed that. I mean, when it, when it, when it came time to, to start the third book, <clears throat> you know, I, I've said it before initially, you know, this was yeah. his idea of, of Wendy getting rid of the box the way she does. Um, but a lot of the other stuff just kind of grew organically, you know, from the story. And, um, I was the one who took us to dairy, like you said, um, you know, introduced a lot of connections to, to, to past, um, you know, storylines in the Stephen King universe. Um, I think by the time the third book came, you know, yeah, Steve knew that this was, was, you know, plugging into that, that dark tower universe, but, but pretty much everything does, whether it's, whether it's on the forefront of, of the story or not. It, it eventually, you know, there, there's a connection or two. So the, the interesting thing for me with Final Task is I, I feel like it it presents a lot of these connections and a, a lot of these Easter eggs, but I also feel like it leaves a lot of them unanswered. And that's that's exciting to me because then, you know, maybe Steve and I will come back later and think, hey, let's, let's answer some of those questions and, and go back. So who knows? Exactly. Well, you're very intuitive because obviously you knew that was going to be my next question uh, to tie into that as well, because no matter what happens, you know, whether you take the, I don't know, the Highlander route, make all the the characters or the, the key characters in Gwenny's Final Task immortal to continue on for as long as you need them to. Right. Uh, but that tie in, of course, with, you know, the Dark Tower mythos alone, I mean, you could you could expand this thing indefinitely. Uh, I mean, or uh, Gwendy could pop up in other stories that are all Steve. And there's yeah. a lot of, you know, there's a, there were a lot of different thoughts that came to me as we were writing it. Um, you know, and it's interesting because, like I said, we, we've never really planned ahead. You know, the second book happened because I woke up one morning with the idea and said, hey, Steve, yeah. I think I know what Gwendy's been doing. And there was no, hey, <laughs> let's write it. Hey, I want to write it. It was yeah. just this is what I dreamt last night. And that's what, you know, gave us the second book. And for the third one, it, you know, it, it and, and Steve talks about this in a couple of the interviews we've done for the book. It, it was one of those rare times where uh, the entire idea kind of came to him in a, in a flash. And when I say the entire idea, I'm really just talking about the, you know, the idea of the space station and, and how it gets <laughs> <The there. MF. laughs> and Richard Ferris. Yeah. The MF um, because the rest of it, we made up as we went and, like I said, just, you know, that was without, you know, I hand over a chunk of pages and I didn't give him any clue where I thought it was going next. And he would do the same thing back to me. And uh, it, we just, you know, we just happened to have, you know, kind of somebody said the dynamic duo. And I laughed when they said that. And I'm like, yeah. in the case of this book, it really felt that way because there was just, there was no, uh, there were no speed bumps and uh, it was just a lot of fun. And I, you know, we probably could have you know, kept writing and done something twice this length and fleshed it out more, but the, the length felt right. And, um, but yeah, I look back and I'm like, well, there's a lot of years in between book two and three, we could always go back and, you know, <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, but, fillers and <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna, I, I think, you know, and we've never, ever discussed it, but let's, you know, who knows, we'll just uh, see if, if he wakes up one, one day with an idea or I do, and maybe we'll revisit. 